In this third and final video on competitive strategy, we now move on to how firms defend a competitive position. Here we are assuming that they have established a competitive position based on either a value advantage or a cost advantage as we discussed in the second video. Now the question becomes how do they sustain that? As this slide shows, we're now going to begin focusing on that the right half of the slide. In the, in the left half of the slide, the firm has either used value drivers or cost drivers to create a superior market position, a superior V minus C, which leads to competitive advantage. Now firms will use isolating mechanisms that to try and retain customers and prevent them from being stolen by rivals while also preventing imitations so that the rivals cannot copy their cost, the, the factors leading to their cost advantage or the factors leading to their differentiation advantage. This leads to a defense of the market position, which leads to sustainable competitive advantage or competitive advantage being sustained over a period of time. If we first focus on these isolating mechanisms to retain customers, what we are trying to do here is lock our customers into our product or service. This is done by increasing search costs, increasing transition costs, and increasing learning costs. By increasing these costs to consumers, they are less likely to leave us for a rival. And so we want to find ways that increase these costs without annoying and losing customers in the process. On the right-hand side, we focus on how we might prevent rivals from imitating our products or services and imitating our advantage, and we'll use things such as property rights that will protect them or highlighting and creating dedicated assets that cannot be copied. And then causal ambiguity refers to an inability to understand cause and effect, and so the rivals may understand what the... the the outcome is and, and the, what the inputs are and what the outcome is in terms of an advantage, but they can't copy it because there's a process or a series of steps in the middle that are hard to define. And finally, we will try and prevent imitation because we will have invested sunk costs that other firms will not be able to copy. In terms of retaining customers, what we're really trying to do is prevent customers from switching to rivals, and we do this by increasing their switching costs. So first, we'll focus on search costs. Search costs will tend to be increased for products whose value is apparent only after the product is, the, is products experienced or experienced goods. For example, as customers try something, they then realize that this, that this product is really valuable to them, really unique to them, and as a result, they're going to more, be more likely to stay because in order to find a competing product, it's going to take time and effort. We might also focus on increasing transition costs. And what this means is if, if a customer is going to switch from us to a rival, we want to try and make it more costly to do so by adding in other costs. For example, if I'm going to switch from, from a Mac to a PC-based uh, computer, I may have to invest in new software. I may have to invest in uh, new peripheral uh, and uh, peripherals and accessories that don't operate between the two systems. This incompatibility will increase the transition costs of me switching from one format to another, thus I'll be less likely to do so. And finally, there are learning costs, and we'll return to the Mac versus PC example. When I switch from a Mac to a PC or vice versa, there are differences in how the product works, differences in commands, things like that. And as a result, there's a, a time and effort cost to learn the new product or service. This means, again, this is a form of switching costs where if the, if the buyers have to incur additional cost to switch, they're less likely to do so. This cost is not financial, but rather it's time and effort. And consumers view that cost very similar to the very similar to a financial cost because their time and their effort is is worth a lot to them. In terms of preventing imitation, there are a couple of different ways we'll try and lock in the resources and capabilities and protect them from being copied and, and therefore protect our advantage. First, we'll use property rights, the legal system, protect our, our intellectual property, our patents and our trademarks that underlie our advantage, such as our brand. Second, we might try and turn external resources into assets that are dedicated to us. And 
By doing this, for example, we might tie up suppliers of certain inputs, or we might move to preempt our competitors and, and create first mover advantage that locks other competitors out of the market. A third source of preventing imitation, again, is causal ambiguity, where the firm's advantage is based on the combinations of, re combinations of resources and capabilities that are difficult to understand and copy. And so, for example, an advantage is based on relationships among employees or relationships with customers or maybe relationships with suppliers that provide us with an advantage. That combination is difficult to one, understand, but then two, recreate. So our rivals have to first figure out what we're doing and then second, try and recreate it. And that causal ambiguity makes it harder to prevent that imitation or it makes it harder for them to imitate our advantage, thus preventing imitation. And then finally, the investments we've already made to develop our advantage, things like spending money on brand, spending money on innovation for new products and services, or the development of relationships with our customers and suppliers. Those are all sunk costs we've invested in over, the, over time to develop our advantage. And as a result, our rivals, when trying to copy them, are going to also have to sink money, time, and valuable resources to try and imitate us. Thus, the greater the level of sunk cost, there is a greater likelihood that we can prevent imitation as a result of our path dependency that we've built up over time. The goal here, again, is to try and keep our rivals from imitating the source of our competitive advantage, uh, either our differentiation advantage or our cost advantage, realizing that in a competitive industry, eventually competitors are either going to be able to imitate or they're going to substitute our advantage. Thus, no advantage can prevent, be prevented from imitation permanently, but we want to try and make it as durable and costly as possible. So we want to make it durable in the sense that our advantage lasts as long as possible and costly in terms of our rivals having to spend a lot of time money and resources in order to, to imitate us. And while they're doing that, while they're trying to spend resources and time and money to imitate us, we're moving on to a new form of advantage and then constantly staying ahead of our rivals.